Well guys, it's been quite some time since you've seen some content on the Eclipse. Now a lot has happened and a lot of changes have been made to the car. I'm gonna have to take you guys back to the start. The Eclipse have been taking a big beating as you can see here. It got rear-ended once on the freeway when I was driving home. Then when I was driving to work, my transmission gave out, but not exactly the transmission, the clutch. As you can see here, my clutch plate broke. So I went ahead and ordered a new set. This is the OEM flywheel, 17 pounds. This is a new one, 11 and a half pounds, OEM style, but lightened. It took me some time, but I got it installed on the car as well as the new clutch. The clutch broke. Um, you saw the pieces, you saw where it broke. Um, I did buy a whole new clutch, competition clutch. Um, clutch and flywheel. The flywheel is a stock OEM kind of style, um, but it is lightened. So it is lighter. Um, I'm actually going to weigh it so you guys can see the actual weight difference. But um, the car's been down for about maybe two months or so. It's been a long time and it's just kind of not gone my way. Um, as you can see right here, I've been having a terrible, terrible time with the flywheel bolts. Um, they were super tight and some of them were already rounded. Um, and it just created a super, super big problem for me. Uh, I had to go through several tools to try and get some of these bolts out. And this one right here wouldn't come out with any of them. It just got worse and worse. So I had to go in there with a trusty old Dremel tool. <laughs> trusty old Dremel tool and I had to basically cut away at the lip to separate it from the flywheel so they could finally come loose and I can get it out with some vice grips. So now, you know, after a long time of, you know, just trying to get at that bolt, you know, after work or whatever, you know, just trying to work on this thing while I'm trying to do other things, you know, I finally got it off. So now I can finally move forward put the new flywheel on, the new clutch, put the trans on and the car should be good. You know, fingers crossed, you know, that's obviously most likely the problem, but you know, hopefully putting everything back on goes smooth and uh, this baby will be back on the road again. So we're gonna get to it. All right, everybody. Today is a big day. Uh, transmission, everything is in the car. Clutch, flywheel, everything is buttoned up. There's not a thing left on this car that, well, except the control arms, but just putting gear oil into the transmission. And so now we're about to see if all the pain and agony was worth it. Um, battery's dead, so we're gonna give it a jump start with the Mustang. And uh, we're gonna turn this baby on and see if it goes into gear and see if I did everything right and uh if all goes well then i can finish putting the wheels on which i just need control arms to put in and then the wheels and then um, i can drop this thing and uh go for a test drive so let's get it fingers crossed so we let it run we're letting the battery get charged for a few minutes and we'll go ahead and see if it'll start up now see if it's got enough power moment of truth baby Not, not quite strong enough yet. What is going on, y'all? So, this is this moment right now is fast forwarding many, many months from the last stuff that you saw. With um, since then, um, as you can see here, she has. Let me brighten this up a little bit. She has a front mount intercooler made from Mishimoto. Wait, am I, is that right? Mishimoto? I don't even know. But she's got a front mount intercooler on now and a 16G turbo. 
All right, so here she is, the engine bay. I gotta say, I love the way the the bay looks now, uh, with the hard piping. So we get the hard pipe from the throttle body all the way down to the intercooler. Looks so good. It's got a 1G ball valve, which I think is crushed. I found this one in the junkyard. Yeah, I took a trip to the junkyard. There was an eclipse, got some parts, and then got this. And I already had one, but this one looks crushed, so I put this one on. Also because I couldn't get my other one off of the pipe. So, yeah. Then... I went ahead and got the, I don't know if you can see it down there, the Mishimoto uh, coolant reservoir, the aluminum one. I had to mount it down there because there was no other good way to mount it. And as you can see, it kind of drips and leaks. So I'm not really sure about this thing. It looks nice, but function, not the greatest. And then, of course, there she is, the 16G herself. Looking very sweet and clean with that J-pipe going down. Love the look of that. Yeah, so so far the car has been running on the 16G for just a couple days now. Took it for about two drives so far. Um, it's running fine, running great. I turned the boost down a little bit, so I'm hitting about uh, 11 PSI max. Just doing that just to be safe because don't have a logger to see what my ratios are and how my fuel injectors are running at and I just want to be safe you know not trying to bust up the bust up the motor before I get it tuned so the only issue that I'm dealing with right now is that the car is overheating when I'm using the AC uh, I discovered that yesterday on the freeway so which is not good because summer is going to be coming soon and I need my AC. So today I'm going to run the car, turn the AC on, and uh, just kind of figure out what's going on. Because I did install the slim fans here. I installed the slim fans. They're supposed to be just as solid enough as stock. Everything is practically ready to go. I already have my fuel pump rewired, I got my fuel pressure regulator, I got injectors already. I also have an EEPROM ECU. Um, obviously the injectors just need to go in, the ECU needs to go in. And I just ordered my ECM Link V3. So when that gets here, you know, I can put the chip into the EEPROM uh, ECU, put it in the car. Uh, plug up the software I can do my own little data log see how the car is running just stock I can pro I'm definitely gonna adjust the fan uh, temperatures to come on earlier so that the car stays cooler and then uh, after that it's pretty much just you know um, looking into where to get the car tuned so because I'm in Southern California and I know of a of a shop called Road Race Engineering, but they're kind of a big dog name. I'm trying to go somewhere a little more low key, a little cheaper, you know, I'm not trying to break the bank just to get the thing tuned. Although I do want it to be reliable. So I'm gonna take my time looking for somebody reputable and uh, reliable. So as far as power, some of y'all might be wondering what it feels like to have the 16G on the stock. Uh, 2G, you know, untuned and everything. Obviously, it's going to be slower, which it is. It's definitely slower, but you have to realize that it is going to be slower. There's no way it's going to be faster, even though it's a bigger turbo. You're putting it on the stock car, stock fueling. You're going to have to take a step back before you take, you know, two or three steps forward. So it's not as fast. Boost kicks in at about 4,000 RPMs, which is doesn't sound like a big difference, but it really is when you're used to it kicking in at 3,000. Um, so that's different. It's taking a little bit of getting used to. Um, yeah, but otherwise, other than that, I'm happy with it and excited to get this baby tuned. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and figure out this fan issue. And once I do, I will uh, let y'all know.